Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for Coffee and Conversation. Um, Wonderful. I'm so glad that you're here, Pastor Jeff, because I have this really awesome question for you. you let's jump into it. Let's yes, do it. Yes, let's dive right in. So um, one of the reflection questions mm -hmm. was about um, what expectations do others have for you? So my question is, what expectations do we have as Christians? Oh, what expectations? All right. So, what expectations do we have as Christians that we put on ourselves or upon others? Um, I think both, or both. even that okay. others may put on us. Okay. Well, let's do that. Uh, let's do all three. Why yeah. not? Uh, that'll be fun. So, I think sometimes what the expectations others put on us, because we're Christians, is uh, some of the things that we should be. Yes, absolutely. Uh, gracious, grateful. <laughs> Yes. Loving, compassionate, merciful, honest. Yes. I think that other people expect Christians to be honest. I think driving better than most Christians do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is that joke, right? Uh, uh, about the police officer that pulled over the car and, and said, please, sir, you need to get out of the car. And uh, we need to see the registration license. Please get against the car. Start searching. He goes, what, what did I do wrong? He goes, well, I'm pulling you over. Suspected of stealing the car. He goes, what do you mean it's my car? He goes, it can't be your car. I saw the Christian fish on the back. And the way you were driving, there is no way <laughs> that, uh, you know, we, I mean, there's that. The, the joke is better if you read it online, I promise. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that, that we would have that. That we wouldn't yell at somebody in line at HEB because they have 25 items in the 15 item <laughs> limit line. Not that any of us have ever done that. No, not at uh, all. <laughs> and I do think that others expect Christians to be forgiving. Yes. Um, now, so that's, I think they just expect that, that, that we will live up to our name. Which is really honest. hard to do sometimes. Isn't it though? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, it is. And, you know, that expectation, I think, is a two-edged sword for us. Because uh, the expectation, uh, that means that they see something in, in Christians that is positive and, and these attributes that they don't really see in other people. They go, well, Christians should be that way. Yes. Uh, and so there is that. And and we've, we've kind of asked for that because yes. we've said this is who we are. Uh, and yet the expectations... Um, well, sometimes we don't live up to them, so people get disappointed. Yes. Uh, but sometimes, it, you know, we got to remember we're all human. We're human. Exactly. We and are we're all human. Sinners. Hi, human. How are you today, human? <laughs> uh, I, I think I was asked last night, are, are you a, are you human? You know. Uh, so. Well, I think that um, I think that we need to be true to ourselves in being Christian. And yes. I think that means also like we are human, but how can we be true to ourselves and still live up to that Christian expectation? I have kind of an example here. Okay. Oh, great. So great. let's um, think about like a really introverted person, right? Um, which I am not. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a shocker. <laughs> but think about an introvert and... Our primary, um, our primary focus as a Christian is to what? Share God's love with others. Share God's word with yeah. others. But that can be really difficult for an introverted person to do. So how do you be true to yourself and still meet some of those Christian expectations? Uh, now, that's great. So uh, I'm thinking about a few different answers. Uh, one is for that specific example you gave, uh, I think the best way that you know one of the best ways of sharing Christ's love I mean, you can do something uh but the relational i mean even right. introverts live in relationship not all right. introverts you know are hermits uh, but the relational drawing to christ or relational evangelism as you might call it uh kind of the, develop the relationship and that it doesn't always have to be in front of a big crowd in fact uh, you know jesus when he first called the disciples it was more one-on-one -on -one in the relationship and it wasn't until later that there's the crowds that Jesus had to deal with. So, um, and I think that God, um, who has made us wonderfully complex and marvelous, that God's workmanship is marvelous, how well we know it from Psalm 139, 14 in the New Living Translation, um, 
that, oh, I was going to say something. I wish I could remember what it was. Oh, yes. well, the, the oh, remain different. And, and because, and so we all have these different gifts that we can use, but God uh, lets us be able to use those. So some people, you know, like Billy Graham, he can do the crowd thing. Yes. Uh, others need to do the one-on-one -on -one thing. So okay. I think no matter where we are, we can use that. And then the other answer, and uh, I kind of left it on what we call the editing room floor from Sunday sermon because I wanted to bring it in here, yeah. uh, is C.S. Lewis, a uh, great Christian author, C.S. Lewis, yes. uh, talked about him being ourselves. And he talked about the closer we come to Christ and the more Christ-like we become, the truer self we become. Okay, I like so, that. Yeah. And, you know, Paul in Philippians chapter 2 um, you know, talks about that, have this attitude or have this mind in you, which was in Christ Jesus to be Christ-like. And as we uh, become more like Christ in our life, we're actually being more of our truer self. Okay. Okay. So. And, and then now, hold on. Uh, yeah, no, you dovetail on the first part again. I thought, because <laughs> uh, there is a couple characters in the Bible that made me think about the first yeah. one. Uh, I think about Peter. Uh, who seemed to be kind of spontaneous and rash and brash and uh, probably not an introvert. Right. His characteristics, his character and his personality didn't really change when he became a Christian. It right. just got refocused. Okay. And the same with Paul, uh, who was very zealous, a zealous Pharisee, zealous for the law. Well, when he became a Christian, he was still zealous. It's just he was zealous for the grace and the good news of Jesus Christ. So okay. I, I, I think that God sometimes might not change some of the essence of who we are. But as we become Christ-like, some things in our life and what we do and maybe some behaviors and maybe we won't be so prone to getting so angry so quick. Some of that should change. Right. But I think the basic is essence of who God made us won't change. I like that, that refocus of, you know, and doing, having that personality trait and being who you are for the greater good. So yeah. I think that's great. But let's talk more about some characters. So okay. you mentioned there's different characters in the Bible, right? Yeah. So, um, and then on Sunday, we also talked about idols. So are there idols in Christianity? And I'm kind of, I grew up Catholic. So oh, I did too. I, yes. Well, hell so, Mary, full of grace, the Lord right? is with us. Yes. We would pray to saints. We would yes. pray to Mary. So is that considered an idol? How does that uh, how does that work? That's a great question. Uh, I am going to say no. I do not think those are idols. Okay. Uh, no, there's different degrees of idols. The, yes. We were talking about on, on Sunday with people like Superman, Batman, L. K. Line, uh, uh, Princess Diana, L. K. Line. Um, you know, Mr. Rogers, L. K. Line, uh, <laughs> Spock, L. K. Line. Uh, <laughs> And, and there's Al calling for me. Okay, let's call that back in a minute. Uh, Never a dull moment. I know, I know. I, sorry, I should have silenced it. It's okay. Then, uh, you know, those are just people we look up to and want to be like. And then, I mean, there's like idol worship, which right. I mean, we don't do. Uh, but uh, saints, I don't think saints are really idols. Okay. Um, saints are venerated people that within that tradition believe that they can carry petitions to God on our on our behalf. Okay. Uh, and we're asking them to, you know, pray on our behalf. We pray to them, not that they're going to answer the prayer, but this is just my understanding. And to Catholics, brothers and sisters, if I get this wrong, please forgive me. Correct me. Send me an email. Send me a text. Call me. Uh, let me know. But the... Um, but they carry our, our prayers, and they're okay. praying for us. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't think that's an idol. Okay. Uh, on, on that. But, uh, yeah. Great. So, uh, like, you know, one of the saints, uh, St. Saint Joseph, uh, which I was born on St. Joseph's Day. So, that, I mean, that's, and uh, if you think about Joseph from the Bible, uh, you know, father, uh, parent, I mean, human parent of Jesus. Yes. Uh, you know, and all he went through. And then he just kind of disappears from the scene and we don't really know what yeah. happened uh but he's also you know he's patron saint of things of, of work you know he was a carpenter and and all that so you know i i think that's okay but it, okay. if you're worshiping them if you worship the saints then right. that's a problem okay but 
I've never heard it. I mean, maybe some people do that, but then they're misunderstanding. Right. But I, I, I don't ever remember being taught you should worship the saint. Right. Uh, on that. Okay. But they, they intercede for us. And, gee, I could use all the intercessory prayers I can get, so I'm okay with <laughs> Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for helping with that, because that is something that I know, um, going from Catholicism to um, being a Methodist, like, I was always curious about. So I really love that we were able to address that today. So, um, and thank you all for sending in your amazing questions. Keep them coming. Um, yes. I really enjoy um, coffee and conversation, and we are looking back. I'm looking forward to doing this again. Next yes, week. and Sunday, the question is what do you do with the mad that you feel? Oh. What do you do with the mad that you feel? I don't know if I Look want to discuss that. You. I know. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thanks, y'all.